All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, chat, all you stream monsters out there, all 400 of you lovely individuals. So, <clears throat> we have a few things to talk about, right? So let's go, let's go in order of operations, right? So, that poll, pool A, pool A went crazy, right? So we have our results. Chat, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to, to, to hear who made it out? So, in first place out of the pool, out of pool A, Chris. Second place, Spencer. Third place, Third place was Blastoise. Fourth place, Pac-Rob. Blastoise narrowly, narrowly beat Pac-Rob. In fifth place, we had ZZZ. Sixth place, we had Chaos. Seventh place, Fidelid. And in eighth place, we had Dwayne. So that's what we're at. So Spencer and Chris are going to move on to the pool semis for, t for on Saturday, which means they get an extra break. They get a day to kind of chill, recover a little bit. Love to see it. Now this pool, the next thing. We have Chanka and Sasu up right here. I'm going to need for you to direct your eyes to the bottom of the screen right now. And let me go ahead and, while they do their warm-ups, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what these songs are, if you, if you can't read those. New Century CSP. That was a Paul pick. Starting off with an AT. Sesu picked Ace for Ace's ESP. That's a 15, but come on. Is, are we really going to call that a 15? We have Bogo picking Endemion ESP. You heard me, Endemion. Talkion picking Ishtar CSP. But it keeps on going. Grady picked Pluto CSP. J Boy picked Max Period CSP. And I'm not going to tell you who picked Degris, but the person who picked Degris wrote on the card that is pronounced Degris, not Degurs. We all we can all wonder who who did that. Lastly, Paranoia Boy, who we just saw putting out a spicy freestyle with J Boy, picked go for the top CSP. Chat. I'm just gonna let you like I'm gonna let that marinate for you all for a second. That this is actually happening. This is what happens when you get. 48 of the world's best DDR players in one spot competing for the ultimate prize, the 10,000. You get some pretty crazy picks. This is top level. This is, this is some good ass DDR that we're about to experience out here, if you know what I'm saying, if you get it. So right now, we have Roger who is updating the site. So if you, if you do, the next time that you check the upbeat site in just a little bit. It will go ahead and update with the standings of the players from their perspective pools after. So, yeah, keep that keep that link handy. Refresh. Um, that being said, some random questions that I have been catching. So they are competing. It is a ten thousand dollar prize pool that will be split among some of the top players. And today, the plan for today is we're going to get, we've already finished pool A, we're going to be doing pool B and C, and then we will, we will call it a stream, and we will be back tomorrow, same time, 1 p.m. of Mountain Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, noon Pacific, if you're on that part of the world, and you can extrapolate from there. With some more of this DDR, we're going to be doing pools D, E, and F tomorrow. And then Saturday will be pool semis and top eight. And it's going to be a really, really good time, I'm just saying. So both of these players, awesome players, lots of fans out there. 
Paul Chunka. I would say one. I want to say maybe the last KS, the last KAC results uh, was top three in the U.S. Arguably one of the best players out there in the world. One of the best players out there in the in the world at DDR always puts up good results. One of the people who can take Chris, who's in a tournament, has taken songs off of Chris that Chris normally has an advantage off of. Yeah, I, I just mentioned a song earlier and was corrected by Josh Vester. Uh, apparently, so it was um, London C that Paul took off Chris last right. time. So, and shout out to the chat, Sesu, Sesu out in New York. So we definitely we have the we have New York boys. All you Northeast boys, stand up! All the crew out there, cheer for your, cheer for the boy. Nice, good slap. I feel like Sesu is uh, definitely an underrated player. He's got like really good coverage for most of the games, um, but I'm not sure a lot of people realize like. The kind of scores that he gets. How did he hit Sutton Plus without stepping off the pad? It's called large wingspan. You have a you have a long wingspan, and you just tap it. You just gently hit it with that tap, and it works. It just works. So actually. That's that actually the 17 on Avenger <laughs> on Chunko's side. Whoa. So as I, I'm going to bring this up because this actually does bring up a good discussion. Chunka, out of all of the out of all the rankings for the upbeat qualifiers, Chunka came in at number two overall. So one of the top players, one of the favorites to come out of this tournament. And then Sesu actually was one of the one of the few players, one of the last players that did qualify. Oh, they're playing awake. Time to get time to get woken up. So I'm I'm waking up right now. So, yeah, um, a favorite a favorite warm up we're seeing from players this tournament. Yeah. A lot of awake going on. I was talking earlier about how it's free. <laughs> um, but Not free. It, it's it's kind of fast. <laughs> it's got some a little bit of a little bit of tricky stuff, but it's pretty um, pretty straightforward. Mostly on sync. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I would call free. So someone did ask, "Hey, are sudden plus butlers is a sudden plus assistant allowed?" No. <laughs> Unfortunately, not. We generally. We generally like to kind of have the rule set that you're not allowed to do anything that may bring in another person out or alter the play for either player or whatnot. So and no, having someone no else. No third bar. Yeah, or no, no third, third bar. bar, second bar yeah. Having someone on there, you know, it's a wild card. It's a wild card that we don't want to have to regulate. You never know what could happen. We like to, as I like to say, we like to minimize John's insult. So, you know, if. It'd be it'd be kind of messed up if like hey I had a sudden plus sudden plus homie and he didn't slap the button he wasn't paying attention and you end up like losing that set yeah although that is a pretty good idea of getting a sudden plus butler but if they are doing it they have to wear a, a butler outfit right I like that idea Chat, like like the Chat Seinfeld spit. episode about the story where the guy loses he uh, doesn't have auto insurance. And got him, got him the accident, so the judge decrees that he has to be Jerry Butler. I'm just saying, though, chat's spitting right now with some of these suggestions. I'm going to let y'all cook. Y'all cooking with some of these suggestions. But speaking of cooking, both of them, oh, yeah, never mind. I'm just going to not talk. You know, Commentator's Curse is mighty strong right now. You know, I have to, like, send it off in the, in the, in the ether. Very crisp MA by Chunka, as usual. Ooh, ooh, still a ooh. good score. Very nice. All right, so we are about to get started with Pool B, chat. You see this? Got a nine piece on that. You see what's below. 
Yeah. <laughs> and we're starting off with Paul's pinch. New century challenge. New century challenge. That's kind of ridiculous. It's it's going for it, and I appreciate it. I appreciate I appreciate how how hard. I mean, you're here. You made it. You've you've proven yourself to be one of the top one of the top 48 players in the world. One of the top players out there. Why not come here and go hard? Why not? Yeah. Put that spice on it. But once again, is this the real match now? We're I about to get so. ready to start. Yeah. All right. So all of you out there, all 430 of you, thank you so much yeah. for being here, having your eyeballs on stream, sharing it out. Just want to take some time not only to thank you, but also thank some of the awesome people that helped make this event possible. I want to lead with the, the, the venue that we're at. Shout out to Round One here in Denver area and technically Little, Littleton, suburb of Denver. The Southwest Plaza Mall, right? Southwest Plaza Mall for hosting us. Awesome. The staff have been super awesome and super accommodating and inviting and really helping us out to make this event a success. It says something when even the staff members say, hey, we recognize how big of a deal this is and we want this to be successful. Let us know. So yeah. shout out to the round one here. Also, shout out to Red Note, Red Note Gaming. Follow them on Twitter. Um, it's a Las Vegas based organization for promoting dance games and rhythm games. They're doing a great job with a uh, really cool Rhythm Gaming Center in, in the Las Vegas area, and I think they're thinking about doing an East Coast location. So get Ooh. get at them and see what's going on with that. That's on me. It's on me, chat. It's fine. It's fine. You were you were, you were Poyo for, for a little yeah, bit. That's, you are no, now no Roger problem. Clark. And chat, we're getting going. I'm more. We're cooking. I just more. All right, well, so this track, definitely um, extremely technical. Yeah, compared to the ESP, this one has a little dash of everything plus some. All right, Chunko right now with a little bit of a, a point lead over Sesu by about 30 points, sitting about negative eight from his PB. However, Sesu is currently currently kind of like dodging between his, per his personal bets. He caught a few misses right before the slowdown. Sesu doing an amazing job hitting that section right there. Paul is honestly tracking his PB pretty well, especially for a very very little amount of warm-up. Sesu hitting these, that shock arrow right now. These shocks are brutal. Some of these you just can't even believe they put in the game. Like that nasty crossover shock arrow right there. Both players doing a good job hitting both of those right there. Paul oh, ripping MF Whoa. seeing that entire <laughs> run. Whoa. Jesus. And there's so many runs Ooh. in this, if you don't set up and start on the right foot, then you're, you're wrecked. All right. Paul, 2206, Sesu, crazy. 2019. 31? Wow. But at the same time, shout out to Sesu getting that EX score up score today. We take up scores, y'all. I feel like 31 on that, it's, it's, it's got to it's gotta be at the top of this pool. Uh, that is a ridiculous score. It's pretty, pretty wild. Definitely a Paul pick, that's for sure. <laughs> Definitely a Paul pick. That worked out in his favor. Kind of setting the course for the rest of the pool. So next up, we actually have Sesu with his pick. Ace for Aces, ESP. Interesting. In so which, it's a 15, but is it really a 15? Let's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult 15. <laughs> exactly. It's one of the last ones that most players typically get as part of their 15, 15 folder journey. And extremely gimmicky. Starts and stops, and there's a slowdown that's kind of hard to read. But really, I think this is a very strategic pick on 
on Seth's part because it's relatively unpopular. And what what that means is like if you look at if you look at Paul's score on that, mm -hmm. it's nine 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 four seven zero for for a player of Paul's fifty three Paul's right? caliber. That's like that's a, that's not that great of a score. And let's and, talk about Sesu over here with forty two. Yeah, so he has a higher EMU's than personal best, and it it really just kind of depends on what's going to happen with how well Paul recalls this song. Paul's MA is, of course, incredible. Um, whether, yeah, it's, I, I, this is actually a really ingenious pick by Seth. All right, let's go. I'm excited to see how it works out for both of them. Paul picked up a miss right there at the beginning. Not sure what happened. Maybe his foot placement wasn't right. So when we say Paul, we, we're saying Chunga. Chunga. Yes. Chanka goes by both. Even wrote it on his card. Both players still doing really well. Chanka doing a good job of making up for that miss. So right on top of Sesu. Sesu still sitting on the PSC. To also reiterate, this is, this is not a match. It's not a head-to-head. -head. Uh, they're not going, they're not playing each other per se. This is a round-robin pool format where each player plays um, a, this set of seven songs, and uh, is it seven? Yeah, it's seven. And their relative ranks are tabulated at the end to determine the winner of the of the pool. But uh, it looks like Sessi picked up his first great right there. I'd say Ace for, for Ace for Ace's expert, that's pretty good. And yeah, making it about three about three hundred and fifty in. With a PFC the entire time. It's pretty solid. And also, he knew no barred that entire section. All right. Paul still doing a really good job of making up for that miss really early on. Actually has a, a EX lead over Sessu right now. They're about 10 points within each other. Paul's M.A. looking mighty crispy. Sassy still looking at that full combo. Very nice job by both. both excellent, players. excellent from both of them. I'm impressed that Paul remembered it as well as he did. Because it's, it looked like it had been a long time since he played it. All right, Sessi, 94 and 4, Paul, 57, 8, and a miss. So have we talked about the players at all? I think we have. Um, Chanka here is uh, just an old school dance game player from the Chicago area. I'm not sure if I've said anything about him, but I feel like he's one of the Probably, when I think of like the top players in the world, if I had to say top 10, he would be in there. Yes. And it's just because his attitude, I think, is extremely unique among a lot of a lot of players in that it doesn't really seem like, he never really considers whether he can, whether he can't do something or not. He just kind of goes for it. And I think uniquely, Paul is very good at DDR, hard DDR songs, um, hard ITG songs, in terms of tech, but also stamina. Um, he's just extremely well-rounded, and it's, it's, I don't know what to say about Paul, other than I'm just always impressed by his scores. Always, and you're, you're definitely right about that. Um, last KAC, last um, actual KAC for DDR, where, you know, America could go right before the pandemic, Paul, I do believe, was number three overall. Yeah. So arguably one of the top players um, in the entire world. So we're going to go ahead and chat. Let's let's just observe the ridiculousness as to what's about to happen. Yeah. Endymion Expert, which this song, for an 18, it's, it's about as, as hard as an 18 really should get. 
And Paul actually playing the Vivid Note skin, changing it for the song. So that's an interesting cut. All right, here we go to the live. He's up on his PB right, at the speed. Oh, handling, oh, picking up some misses right there. All right, Sesu about to break 1,000 EX right here on this freeze. All right, here we go into the speed up chat. Sesu looking a little drained, but doing a good job of just like persevering. Absolutely love to see it. Oh, looking absolutely crisp as we go right into this next <laughs> break right here. All right, uh, this is their last chance this to kind of. so sick. It's so it's so crazy. This is their last chance to cast their breath. Sorry, sorry for the silence. It's just you just had to take that in. Amazing. Yeah. So Paul's amazing set from both Paul's of them. Paul's score on this, I feel like, I don't know. I, I kind of don't see that as being that far off from what he would get if he was warmed up. Maybe, maybe it is. If it is, then like I, I don't even know what to say. That's that's really good performance on Endymion without playing that many songs. Yeah, absolutely. And you saw at the beginning he was he was. Consistently upscoring, he had a massive upscore on his on his EX score. So that's definitely within striking distance. I'd say if he's a little bit more warmed up, if he had a little bit more of like the stamina between him, easy, he would be able to. I think I think he'd be able to get that. By yeah, the way, I'm that was Bogo's pick. In oh, case Bogo. you're wondering. Interesting. So next up, we have Ishtar CSP. This was Tolkien's pick. So we're picking a. An interesting, an interestingly slightly technical shock arrow charge is our CSP. Yeah, it's it's got the shocks. What I'm wondering about this as a pick, though, is that I feel like as far as MA goes, it's extremely straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess you would, by picking this, you would be banking on people hitting the shock. Right? Oh, for sure. Like, this is, this is one of those, this is kind of like, but even if they do hit the shocks, is that is that going to be enough of a deficit? Well, Paul has 10 perfects on this, and Sesu is actually really close to a PFC. Um, looks like he had probably 36 perfects. So really good perfect score. Just probably just picked up like a great or so. Like yeah. Probably on like one or two greats on that, which is still a pretty darn good score, actually. So Saturday, we I do believe we're starting at 1 on Saturday, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. If not, it'll probably be 12 or 1. You know, with yeah, it sounds about like 1 would be the right, yeah. right call. It all depends on how, how quickly we kind of get through the rest, of, the rest of the pools and, you know, if there's any stragglers, nothing kind of left over. And, you know, I've run, I've helped TO and run and been to a lot of tournaments for various DDR, rhythm games, fighting games throughout the years. All we can do is hope that we're on time and on schedule. It doesn't always happen, but it's beautiful when it does. Yeah, with, as with any kind of production, it's, you expect delays. All right, so here we go, chat. Starting off immediately with Ishtar CSP. There's really only one difficult section of this song, and that's uh, a particular part in the middle where there are some gallops with shock arrows thrown in. And that's essentially the part that you're betting on whenever you make a pick like this. 
You're betting that you can do it and other people might not be able to do it. Correct. And it's, it's also pretty interesting seeing the difference between the two, seeing how they approach the shock arrows. Uh, Cecil with a little bit more of a hop on a lot of his shock arrows. Paul being very minimal, just kind of like tilting his feet and releasing, uh, releasing off of the arrows at those points. Could be just extreme ITG mind training. Ah, yes. The bracketing placement. Ooh, and Paul a little bit, looked like he was a little bit early and caught a shock arrow right there. Oh, and Sessu doing a great job catching that tail, the tail end of that gallop pattern we were speaking on earlier. Shanka still with a pretty good EX score, even despite like the several of those shocker misses. Cycola. All right, Shanka breaking 1,300 EX score. Sessu just now hitting it. Sessu plus seven on his EX right now. Looking at an up score. All right, here we go as we finish out the end of the song. Beautiful. Chunka, 1760. Sesu with 1730. 30 points between them. Chunka with 10, 3, and 3 misses. And if I'm correct, looks is that zero good? I'm going to say that's zero good. That's about what I would expect Paul to get on a song like that. Yeah, it, you know, just I think... Those, those, those initial shock arrows, now we talk about shock arrows. For those of you who are just tuning in, if you've ever seen like Step Mania, ITG, where they have mines, the difference between shock arrows and mines is that if you hit a mine, it does break combo, it does affect your score, but it's just the, the only distraction you get is you get a loud noise that will probably throw you off. In DDR, shock arrows, if you hit it, and it's not just one arrow, it's, it's the entire thing, so you have to lift your feet completely off of all arrows. If you hit it, it dims the it dims the actual lanes for about maybe a second or so, and I always like to say it's cascading. So you won't just it's seldom that you'll get just one miss. You may get a few misses because the screen just goes out on this. So we have Pluto. This is Grady's pick. I know Pl uh, Grady was grinding Pluto a lot. It's actually I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Talking with everyone last night, someone shared the tech that Chanka is very unfamiliar with Pluto CSP. Oh, wow. And as we see... Oh, it looks like 901. Damn. Yeah. Damn, this, this is... So this, this could get wacky. This was a counter pick. So far, both players showing that they are very familiar with this chart. Paul picking up a good... But his EX is still pretty good. Still picks up a miss right there. Sessu's still sitting on a perfect combo right now. It's possible that this song could throw off the entire pool. It could. At least from what I would have expected otherwise. Ooh, and Sessu with the gorgeous crossover. Chanka sitting on an upscore right now. Despite being about 40 points right behind Sesu's score, picks up another miss. Yeah, I can tell that you can kind of see that Chunk is a little bit kind of unfamiliar because you see him kind of hesitating on some of the stops. Like he's he's played he's played Pluto enough to know where these stops are, but just is still kind of unfamiliar, so kind of throwing them off. And Sesu picking up a great, but still plus 30 on his EX score. Sesu still sitting on the full combo. Paul looking at about plus 60 EX over his best. All right. Damn. And Sesu, 1498 to that, Chanka's 1390. That's definitely an upset as far as I'm concerned. I, I wouldn't have expected that. But again, this is a, Pluto is a song that a lot of players typically ignore until the end of their 16 folders and it's because it takes a lot of studying and even a lot of the players who you know were around when supernova 2 came out likely didn't play this chart just because yeah it's 
It was very unfriendly, a little bit obnoxious to get. So yeah, that that was that was a counter pick from deeper in the bracket from Grady. All and right, so I think this is J Boy. It's funny because Paul knows this one a lot more <laughs> than Pluto. Yeah. Um, this is in Paul's wheelhouse. So this is a J Boy pick. This is a J Boy pick. All right. It's actually surprising because I do believe someone was saying like, "Oh, why didn't such and such pick Max Period?" This was more likely. Like Paul should have picked Max Period. Paul is great at this chart, and we see it with that PSC of 44 or 34 perfects. But he decided to go a new century. Got a double A with a 955. All right, this song from originally, I do believe, what was it? It was DDR Party. It was DDR Extreme. Extreme for for, C for console. For PS2. Yeah, for yeah. PS2. All right, and Max Period on both on difficulty ESP and CSP starts immediately. So you don't get a time to reacclimate yourself to this song. It just goes. And speaking of going, both of them are pretty close to each other in EX score. It did look like Sussu picked up a miss, but his MA is crazy right here. Yo, impressive play from both of them. Paul picking up a miss, a little uncharacteristic right there. You also notice that Paul's playing on such a plus. Yes. All right, there but goes. But also with combo above arrows. Ooh, that's a good point. It's, it's pretty difficult to read that. All right, and Sesu slapping a sudden plus a little bit earlier. As he's a little bit more familiar with this section. Paul's going to go ahead and wait until the speed up. All right. Paul went ahead and took a little bit of the combo to go ahead and get the speed up, and it pays off. Look at that. The snow combo going on to that. Sessu picking up a little bit of a miss, expecting, which is being the fastest section of the song. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good, good run from both of them. Very impressive. <laughs> it's, everyone made the exact same sound. <laughs> yes. it's, it's not going to be the first time we hear it this entire pool. This pool is dastardly, chat. Chunka, 1694, and Sessu with 1562. Both with, with about the same amount of misses. Chunka with a little bit of better PA and MA on that. He's able to kind of handle that. Yeah, Paul's known for his for his foot speed, as Lolipo in chat points out. That's it. See you next time. So next up, as as we get ready to go to the the last two sets, the last two songs of this set. Somebody that we all know, kind of a you know a, a, an enthusiast of this song. It would say you would say it's their signature. Okay, right, 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 right. We're gonna go ahead and see Dead End Groove Radar Special, also known as Degris, and I was explicitly told not to say it this way. It is not Degris or Degurs. It's so. I think so. Hudson pronounces it pr pronounces it Degris. Yes. And most people pronounce it Deggers. It's one of those things that's kind of like potato, tomato, tomato, tomato. Yeah. Depending on where you're from, you're a caramel, caramel person. Deggers, I feel it's, that's, that sounds like more of a word to it, me. It does. It's not, it's like but a, it sounds it like one. It sounds like a word. Sounds like it could be something. It could, <laughs> sounds like it could be like, it sounds like it could it's, be a it's word. some like crafting material that you use to like polish things. I'm going to, hey, c go ahead and fetch me some of this degris. I need to shine exactly. this. Exactly. I'm out of degris. That's, yeah, it, I, I can see it. I can see it too. Absolutely. And degris, I, I mean, to each their own. I'm a degris person. I'm just, it's just habitual for me. But I, I don't shame anyone. I don't anti-scub anyone who says Deggers. It's all love. We can all agree that this song is just absolutely comical and so ridiculous. So Dead End Groove Radar Special is what we're saying. That's yes. like the, the abbreviation that people keep talking about. And this, this chart, it's a special chart released in Supernova 2 for Dead End with the classic DDR song from Third Mix. And it's designed to max out the groove radar. And what that means is 
it's supposed to create, it's, they're supposed to contain enough stream, chaos, air, voltage, and uh, whatever the other one is. Air, air, air stream, stream voltage. chaos, voltage, whatever. And to max out the radar to where it's like at a perfect, uh, like, pentagon. Yeah, so Supernova 2 was pretty noteworthy for not only having the a lot of songs that are named after themes of planets, but also having some songs that were recharted to or maximize certain parts of the groove radar. And this is maybe the most unique 18 in that it, it isn't per, it isn't exactly physically challenging in the same way as say for instance like Triple Journey or Endymion. But it's incredibly technical and makes you move in ways that are Uncomfortable for most Uncomfortable players. and very uncommon in DDR. Correct. So we're, we're going to see this. It's going to be really interesting seeing all the players of the pool as to how they approach it. Um, a lot of people do play, and I do believe um, Kaze 573 Hudson, as we will call him, um, I do believe he plays it on left. Some players opt for shuffle, and some players just go ahead and just sight read it raw. So it's going to be really fun to see how people decided to approach this. And you can see both of them taking a little bit of that extended break. Because once you once you get at the point in which you start playing 18 very consistently, this chart really leaves an impression on you. <laughs> All right, chat, here we go. TL Fusion hyping up the crowd. Yeah, starting off pretty difficult right away where you have the you have those drills right there starting off on jack drills right there pretty challenging and it's going to throw you off for a lot of people who are new to this chart it's very hard to read uh, most people play it on different turn odds just because it requires so much strategy yeah these, you, these jacks here you got to spam these jumps it's kind of relentless yeah you see shot you see chunka Playing it on shuffle and Sesu playing it on his left as I brought up before. And compared to the original dead end, this actually has, as you see, it has BPM changes on like the original chart that doesn't. And that's why you see the sudden bus mod on for both of them. Both great, players great handling, it, on handling both. it really yeah. well, actually. Alright, both of them kind of trading some combo breaks right there. Just, it checks out for this song. with about almost about a 50 EX score improvement. And both of them get the slap right there. And both of them break combo at the same point to get that slap. And here we go into the speed up. These awkward runs. Both of them handle it really good. Very and nice. Awesome scores from both of them. Almost 1,600 on Chunka's side. 1,596 to 1,428. That's extremely clean. Yo, 50 score. perfects. Hold up. Not bad. Absolutely not bad. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a top tier score on, on Deggers. So, lastly. And not, you know, a 954 on Deggers, I would say that's, that's extremely you know what? respectable. I don't. If you, yeah. I can't get a 954 on Deggers. That's impressive. There's not many people that can say that they can just, just like play cleanly, it randomly. Yeah, and just cleanly get it out. So lastly, we have Go to the Top CSP. This is going to be our last 18 of this set. Both players have pretty pretty respectable scores. Um, actually, no, Trek is like I'm looking at the wrong thing. Chunka with a with 19 perfects, and it looks like. Sesu has a low 93, has like a, a high 93 on it. So it's going to be, so we're going to see if Chanka can go ahead and match that score, play pretty close to what he has on his PB. And turns out that Sesu, I always like to celebrate up scores on the stream. Sesu has been consistently up scoring a lot of his, a lot of his songs on this set. That's something you love to see. I always like to say that when you go to a tournament like this, 
you always play up. You always play you play way better than you normally would on your average day. And Sesu is showing it, consistently upscoring a lot of his songs today. It's a very beautiful thing. Yeah, it's, playing next to insanely good players always is always a great motivator. And even though this isn't a head-to-head, -head, you know, playing with someone, it does kind of push you a little bit to like, all right. Let me see if I can let me see if I can get close or if I can pull one up, you know, get some songs over someone. So that is there is a little bit of something to the head to head, you know, doing the round robin this way. Not only because, you know, efficiency because we have one machine. Yeah. But it, it definitely calls you to play a little bit better. You don't feel like all the spotlight is just on you. It feels like you're kind of being motivated. Someone is right, setting let's, the let's pace. Let's go, for guys. You. This is kind of a footwork A team. MA wise, relatively, relatively, it's not bad to MA. Sync's pretty good. All right, both players sitting on the PSC right now. Sesu right now, cleanly getting that up score. Handles the crossovers really well. Paul picks up his first great right there at the turn. I think he can, I think his place was a little bit off on the play. But can we talk about Chunk's MA is absolutely crazy. Wait a look at all of the snow falling over there. Oh, and Sesu picks up his first miss and a good right there, but it's still over a hundred on his on his on his PB Chunk right is, now. Chunk is iced out. Both of them handling the speed up really good. He picked up a miss right there on that crossover. I'm not sure if his foot placing is off or coming back. He's getting a little bit exhausted, but he's still up scoring over 120 at this point. Oh my god. And Shanka. Those turns are so, so sick. Very impressive from Shanka double stepping a lot of that. 1958, full combo. Sesu gets the massive up score with 18. 22. Both players finishing strong, hugging it out. He's got a 24 pack here uh, on Go for the Top. And Sasu getting over 3K up score on it to get 96. So we love to see that improvement. Shout out to both players. Chat, let's hear it. Let's give it up for both players. Those runs by Chunka in that, in that song were so crisp. It was, it was absolutely it was, it beautiful was, to see. 24 totally perfects, sick. two greats full combo. So, next up,